In this video, we are going to uh, go through a practice quiz. It's actually a quiz that I gave in class, um, and it's all about polar coordinates. So let me see if I can get this kind of set up, and then uh, we'll do it. So you can find a link to the quiz in the description of the video, and let's get started. So the first question uh, says, given r of theta equals 2 theta sine of theta over 3, where theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, First thing we want to do is write the equation of the line tangent to r of theta at theta equals 3 pi over 4. All right, so equation of a tangent line, so we're going to need to find x, we're going to need to find y, and we're going to need to find dy dx. So we know what those are. So x um, involves r of theta, right? So it's going to be r of theta cosine theta, and then y, kind of similarly, is r of theta and then sine of theta. So r cosine, r sine, that should be familiar from doing polar things. And then the derivative is still dy dx, but we get dy dx basically by the chain rule. Think of parametric equations. Um, it's going to be dy d theta divided by dx d theta. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to store all those things on my calculator. So first, I'm going to store, uh, I'm going to call it r of t because theta is kind of annoying. Uh, control and then templates and then 2t times sine of t over 3. All right, so I have that. Now let's store x of t and that's going to be um, r of t times cosine, which you can get from the trig key. It's faster for me to type it. Uh, store y of t. So y of t is r of t times sine of t. And then I'm going to store dy dx. So it's the slope of a line, so I'm going to call it m. So m of, not of x, m of t, because it's a function of theta, is going to be, so fraction template, I want the derivative with respect to t of y of t over the derivative with respect to t of x of t. So that's going to give me dy dt over dx dt, which is dy dx. Um, okay, so all of those say done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate each of them at 3 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4, and here we go. So I'm going to do x of 3 pi over 4. And it says to do it approximately in the direction, so I'm just going to hit Control Enter. It's actually, it has a really nice value if you just hit Enter. It's actually, uh, it's actually negative 3 pi over 4, but we're doing it approximately. So that's x, uh, let's get y, and then I'll write them down. And then let's get the slope. All right, so I have all of those. So let's write those down. So x of 3 pi over 4 is approximately, so negative 2.356. And y of 3.4, uh, 3.4, 3 pi over 4 is approximately, 2.356, so positive, and then um, the slope, so dy dx, evaluated at theta equals 3 pi over 4, is approximately uh, 0.138. And now what I need to do is write the equation of the tangent line, so let's do that. I'm going to use point-slope form. So the equation of the tangent line in point-slope form is going to be y minus the y that I calculated, and then equals m, the slope that I got, times x minus the x that I calculated. A really common mistake is to um, use theta instead of uh, x as the value. Um, that just happens a lot. Don't do that. Another common mistake is to think the slope is dr d theta, which it is definitely not. So also don't do that. Uh, let's move on to the next part. So the next part says, uh, so the same curve. We want to find the rectangular, not the polar, equations of the vertical tangent lines to r of theta on the interval on in which it exists. So to do that, um, the first thing you can do is you can actually like graph it and take a look. So I'm going to insert, so that's doc for, I'm going to insert a graphing page. I'm going to change this to polar, so that's menu 3, 5. And then here, I'm just going to graph r of you can't use t, you actually have to use theta, so that's in the pi key there from 0 to 2 pi, so that's good. 
and then um, maybe zoom out. So let's zoom out so we can see it. And then maybe zoom box so it looks a little better. Something like that. Okay, so you can see there's going to be a line here. There's going to be one here. And then um, there's also maybe potentially one here. And we'll let, we'll let the math work that out and see if that actually happens. So we need to find, um, we need, so vertical, which means uh, the denominator of dy dx is zero. So we need dx d theta to be zero. And strictly speaking, we also need dy d theta to not be zero at those points, but that's not gonna happen in this case. So we only sort of need to worry about it. So if we go back to the calculator, and go back to this page, you can do control and to the left to get there. Uh, it's gonna be, so I wanna solve. So menu three, one, the derivative. So with respect to t of x of t equals zero, and I want to solve for t, and then I want, to, so there's trig functions involved, so it's probably periodic, and you don't want to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is uh, such that, and zero is less than, t is less than, I wish there was a faster way to do this. I mean, there is on the keyboard, but on, on the computer, but not for you guys. And then two pi. So let's get some answers there. All right, so there's three values on the interval, uh, which kind of corresponds to the three places that I thought might have vertical tangent lines. Um, okay, so let's jot those down. So these are our theta values. So we get theta is approximately, the first one is about 1.7, 1 1.070, and then about 3.539, and then about 6.255. Okay, so those are the values. And what I want to do now is I need to figure out the x values that go with them, right? Because uh, we're writing rectangular and vertical. So vertical lines are x equals. So we want that. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to remember that you know x is r theta times cosine theta. So r cosine theta. If I go back here, then what I can do is I'm going to do something weird to try to get um, specific values. So Instead of solving from zero to two pi, to get that first value, I'm gonna solve just from zero to two, right? Because there's one uh, at 1.07, and that's definitely between zero and two, so it's just gonna capture that, like that. And then what I can do is x of t, and then such that, uh, and then I can just do answer, right? Just paste this down, and I get that. So I have one value. So this corresponds to x is about 0.359. And then I can kind of keep doing that. So the next one is uh, like 3.539. So that's between two and four, let's say. So I'm gonna solve this between two and four. So this is why I don't have to store anything or type a lot of values. And then I can uh, just do x of t such that, and then the answer again. So I get negative 6.034, so let's record that. And then I wanna do one more. So uh, it's gonna be uh, between four and two pi, let's say. So four, between four and two pi. So you wanna reuse things that you've already typed as often as you can. So we get that, do x of t, such that, that's true. So 10.888, that's kind of an annoying one. Um, so let's record that. And then we're actually done with that part. All right, um, let's do part C of this question. So for part C, uh, we wanna find the area of the region bounded by R of theta, theta sub one, theta sub two, where theta sub one and theta sub two are the values of theta for which r of theta has horizontal tangent lines on its domain, so from zero to two pi. Also sketch the region this represents, and it's just gotta be a very rough sketch. So what I'm gonna do is kind of cheat, actually. Um, I'm gonna graph this thing, and just like first just look at it. So horizontal tangent line, so uh, I think there's a horizontal tangent line like here and down here. So I'm gonna try to find that area. So what I did, I actually kinda did this before, 
and I, I took a screenshot of that. And if you look at it, there's kind of like right there and kind of there. And what I want to do is so I want a radius that kind of goes out to there. I want a radius that goes to there. And then I want all the area in between that. So that's kind of the shaded region here. So we get all of that. Okay, so I need to find those values. So those are horizontal. And horizontal tangent lines mean that dy d theta is equal to 0. And if dy d theta equals 0, that's a calculator problem. So I'm going to go back here. And I'm going to, actually, maybe I'll just, let me add, I'm going to add another calculator page. So I'm in the same problem. So I can still use my, all my, everything's still defined, right? And what I want to do is I want to solve. So menu 3, 1. I want dy d theta. So that's the derivative with respect to t of y of t. When does that equal 0? Solve for t. And then my interval is uh, 0, t, and 2 pi. So let's see what we get. All right, we have that. So it's almost always warning you that more solutions might exist. Uh, no, this is results obtained using approximate arithmetic. So uh, I don't know. I guess it's good luck to us. Um, so we get this. So those are our values. So I'm going to write those down. So approximately, uh, what you want to do is write them down as many decimals as you can get. So uh, where am I getting those decimals? What I'm doing is kind of the same thing I did before, but like sort of cheating. So I'm going to go from 0 to 3. And then if I arrow up and press enter, you can see all of these decimals are here. You want to use a lot of decimals so that your answer is correct to three decimal places when you're done. So we do that. And then uh, go from 3 to 2 pi. And it'll give us the other thing. And then arrow up, paste it down. We get a lot more decimals that way. So let's jot that down as well. So approximately. 4.89441595111. Just gonna stop there. Um, so I truncated that one, but I don't think it's gonna have too big an impact. All right, so we are looking for the area of this thing. So this is actually a pretty straightforward one. So the area is going to be uh, one half, and then it's the integral from theta sub one to theta sub two. So it's a really good practice to store values write them down, name them, and then in your integral, use the names that you gave them rather than try to write in that entire number. Um, it's good because then you can carry it forward through other problems. I highly recommend that you do that. Um, and then it's going to be r of theta squared. So don't forget to square your function when you're doing polar areas. And then this, if we punch it in, so let's see, I'm going to actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrow over here and put like a two and a colon. So what I can do, I'll, I'll just delete that and do control there. So I'm gonna store this as T2. I'm gonna go up and get this value and do the same thing. I'm gonna delete the equal sign, store it as T1. So colon equals there. So if I press T1, I'll get this. T2 gives me this and that's good. So I'm going to do one half the integral from t1. So you can use the var key to speed things along for you. t1 to t2 of uh, our function is named r of t. We have to square it and then dt. And we get approximately, so we get approximately 62.25. Oh, whatever, 251, 62.251. Okay, so this is getting a little long and we're about to move on to question number two. So what I'm gonna do is uh, cut this video here and pick up in another video. All right, I hope you found this helpful so far and good luck and I'll be back in the next video.